everybody. I'm very welcome this uh, online roundtable organized on behalf of Lézard Film Festival and of the Lab Femme de Cinéma. The Lab Femme de Cinéma is a think tank that works on the issue of the equality between women and men, and men in filmmaking. It aims is to bring awareness in the cinema industry and to influence those who have the power to make things change. The lab is based on three pillars. Uh, we first organize workshops gathering women and men across the cinema industry to sensitize them to the issues of inclusivity and equality behind and in front of the camera. The second pillar of the lab is, uh, are the masterclass uh, we organize to highlight emblematic female directors who can serve as role models. This morning, for example, we had a masterclass with Anne Fowland, a very emblematic uh, female, female director. And the third pillar uh, of the lab is the study in the place of the European female directors that we update and complete every year in order to follow the statistics and the evolution of the policies and their consequences in the long term on the place of women filmmakers in Europe. I'm particularly glad this year that the study goes along with this virtual discussion among various national film centers in Europe, moderated by Anna Chenik. Thank you, Anna, to have accepted this mission. Uh, and welcome to you all. Now I leave you with Anna, and I wish you a very pleasant and constructive debate. Bye. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, so, uh, again, thank you for being with us. I will give a short note of introduction and I basically I would like to introduce you. So I, I'm going through uh, my uh, beautiful screen split into a mosaic and uh, the first person uh, there uh, is uh, Elisa, um, Elisa Rodriguez Ortiz. Uh, the uh, director for promotion and international relationships from uh, ICA. Um, then I have Teresa McGrain, um, deputy chief executive uh, from Screen Island, and with her uh, along I have Amar Markey, uh, who works there as a development executive. Um, Late, just under the the case on, underneath, I have uh, Gida Leiden, um, managing director from Film Fund Luxembourg, um, Anna Serner, uh, CEO of the Swedish Film Institute, and uh, we unfortunately cannot see her, but there is Leslie uh, Thomas, the general secretary of the French CNC, uh, with us. Um, so thank you very much um, to introduce very briefly uh, as fabian said um, the um, lab publishes a study and basically we have picked you uh, among the countries that have some incentives uh, to work uh, to find a nick uh, to fight the inequality between um, genders in the industry um, i'm very happy that uh, you can be with us because this started somehow with you in 2016 when you came to give uh, a talk um, at Les Arcs. It was uh, the first round uh, of the lab. But in 2016, um, it was before the Me Too uh, affair. And from there, we had a kind of paradigm shift, I would say. Uh, really, things have changed. My first question to you all um, is uh, how things started, how did your film fund started to work on the matter? I think the first step is to acknowledge, uh, so, and then to think and brainstorm. Uh, how uh, did it start for you? Um, Anna, I would gladly uh, you explain us how uh, you decided to make it a matter of interest for the film center. Thank you very much, Anna, <laughs> uh, and uh, I'm happy to be here again. I wish I could be in the slopes of Les Arcs, but uh, uh, so what uh, I started doing when I uh, started my position in 2000, 
uh, 11 was uh, to start counting. I would say that was the most important step to raise the awareness of how the situation uh, was. Uh, and we at the Swedish Film Institute had already done quite a lot of uh, counting. So it was very easy for us uh, to uh, establish how bad the situation was. We funded over the period before 2006 to 2012, uh, 29 percent female directors. So uh, that was a good starting point to uh, say that the goal or the vision for us was 50-50 over time. So I think that is really uh, to start count and do the counting continuously, not just once a, a year, but we do it every month. As we take funding decisions every month, we aggregate the numbers. And as we keep track of it every month, we can easily in the beginning of a year see how we are doing. And if we lack uh, admissions uh, or if we lack decisions, uh, I ask them why and what do they see in pipeline? And if we see that it's a challenge to reach a good number that year, we start doing new actions. So we start off uh, by uh, going out to the production companies or having open seminars to again, raise the awareness. And by doing that, uh, we can over time reach the 50-50 target more or less. Uh, so I think it's the counting, but having a target uh, to uh, aim for or decide that you shall reach uh, is more accurately described. But from my understanding, in your specific case, it also came from a personal concern, basically. It, it is an issue that was dear to you. And when you became the CEO, you decided that it would be the core of your policy. And so, the... Well, uh, I have to say that that there had been a lot of work done at the Swedish Film Institute, but maybe my, uh, my strong decision uh, was one step higher because what I said as well, and which I still believe is that this is not a matter of challenging the quality. I think uh, women and men are uh, really as capable both to have the potential to do good films. So that's how I came to threaten with quota. We didn't do quota because I think my threat was so serious that they understood that it really was true. So they understood the money wanted women, so they found the good women. Thank you. Um, what on the Irish uh, side? When, uh, when uh, have you started... Uh, to be interested in the matter, how things have, have started for you. Uh, Teresa, your mic. Um, I think our journey began a little later uh, than Anna's um, um, journey with the Swedish Film Institute. We had um, a very important year in 2016, and it was called the Year of Commemorations. And it was essentially the commemoration of a, you know, in Ireland, very historic um, um, battle that had occurred in 1916. And it was, was when Ireland um, was, let's say, revolutionizing against its colonization. Um, so in 2015, there was a lot of preparation for these commemorations from 2014, 2015. There was a lot of preparations. There was a lot of cultural initiatives taking place to, to mark these commemorations. And uh, the National Theatre had uh, released a program of uh, um, theatre uh, plays that would take place to uh, commemorate the, um, the uh, 2016. Um, and in the program, there was only one uh, female director and it shone a light into 
it shone a light for everyone. It started with theater, but it began to shine a light very much on um, female directors and female writers involved in the creative arts, theater, film, television. And so then we, I think really started to look at ourselves, you know, there, there were conversations going on and there's, there absolutely was, but I think we began to really kind of exam, examine ourselves, look at the numbers and and really start to say, look, we, we need to lead the charge and do something here. So um, clearly what we looked at when we started to count was quite a depressing figure. Um, we had very, very low numbers of female directors, very low number of female writers. So we've really since then put a lot of care and attention into what I would say is a, a tapestry perhaps, or you know, a, a kind of a jigsaw of policies um, in order to encourage female writers and directors, first of all, to apply to us. I mean, that actually became, you know, when we really looked at it, the, the number of applications was very, very low. So we had to look at that. Um, we have run um, a lot of initiatives you know, around mentoring, you know, we have run a lot of initiatives around additional funding uh, for uh, female writers and directors attached to projects. Mm -hmm. And I know we'll talk about the co-development initiative with Luxembourg, but um, yeah, certainly a lot of initiatives around um, development. Thank you very much. Um, I'm happy to go southern uh, in Europe, um, in Spain. What was your journey? Yeah. Thank you, Anna. Well, I think we started like with the legal mandate. We have a law that has already 13 years old. Uh, it's from 2007. And it establishes that the uh, Spanish Film Institute shall promote policy, uh, sorry, shall implement policies to promote gender equality. So since 2007, we are actually obliged to promote some, some kind of measures. We started pointing out to the content of the films, labeling the films. Um, we established in 2011 a um, kind of label as to certify that some films were specially fitted to promote gender equality because of their content. But it, was, it wasn't until last year, actually, that we effectively um, implemented policies concerning public funding. And now we have like uh, settled different uh, quotas and um, extra points that we're trying to make a bigger impact through our funding and um, fostering women creation and production of films. Uh, I, can't, I can't hear you, Anna, I'm sorry. So basically you started a long time ago, but there's been an acceleration the past two years. Yes, I think we, the, the, the issue has moved up in the political agenda. And now it's like really on the on the, on the top three, maybe in, in, in Spain, in our country, we do have a ministry of equality and it's like a, one of the main policies, uh, not only in this sector, but, but in, in the whole country. Gracias. Um, I. I would like to question Guy now uh, in uh, Luxembourg, please. Yeah, I think that, uh, hello everybody. I think that gender equality was never really an issue in, in Luxembourg, especially not in the, in the film industry because we have a young, very young film industry that only became professional roughly 30 years ago. And the first, only to say that the first nomination for director at the Cannes Film Festival was a movie by a, Luxembourg, by a female Luxembourg director. So the, the issue, especially because, not only because we're young, but also a very small industry. So for us, it was never an, um, a question about uh, um, gender. It was more or less to find the right people that are able to find the professions that were able to, uh, 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 um, to become writers or become directors or become producers independently from their uh, um, uh, uh, from the gender. But of course, a few years ago, 16, 17, when the entire discussion became more uh, uh, present in the industry as such, 
we then at the time did a quick analysis of our situation at home and we had to find out that it was not much better than in the other countries uh, as well. So we decided then, first of all, to, you were mentioning the, 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 the term of fighting. I wouldn't say fight the gender inequality, but at least to try to do something to, to, out, to, to counterbalance the situation. So we try to start since the, um, yeah, I, I would say three, four years ago to encourage producers to watch out um, what kind of production we were doing. Because you have to uh, um, not forget that Luxembourg, I think we are probably the only country in Europe where we do more uh, minority co-productions than majority co-productions. For majority co-productions, of course, it's very difficult because we only do let's say three or four feature films a year and in order to find the um, gender equality for three or four features that's not the right issue and we cannot because the industry is too small we cannot really do anything against this it's, uh, we cannot force people to become a director or to be uh, the fee uh, um, to become a director or to become a producer so that's not uh, really our job but what we can do is as we're supporting so many minority co-productions to watch out which kind of productions we support and especially which kind of productions our producers choose and when you find out and that's what our analysis showed uh, a few years ago is that uh, up to 90 percent of the minority co-productions that were attracted to Luxembourg were co-productions by uh, male directors and then we decided and that's what I kept telling our producers every now and then and all, uh, again and again that they have not only to rely on their friends or on the same producers which were usually male producers but to get a diversity in this uh, um, in their in their choices so that they can attract more female direct productions by female directors to Luxembourg and um, but we found out that it's not that easy to to convince the producers to do that because they were used to um, uh, to to work together with their old friends and their old partners but by insisting uh, on this issue we have nowadays a better situation so there was an evolution there are more films that we can um, support by female directors but we also did or took some initiatives to promote um, this uh, gender equality and i think we can go into those details afterwards the situation isn't very uh, uh, fabulous for the moment but we're working on it and i uh, for the moment uh, we're also uh, invested into a study that is currently being done on the entire situation in Luxembourg, in the film industry, in the different areas, uh, uh, technicians, actors, uh, directors, and producers, and that will be uh, ready at the beginning of next year. So based on that study, we can, of course, take other decisions and other measures. Thank you, Guy. Um, Leslie, um, if um, you, you told me that you're going to speak in French, but I know you're following us in English. I'm going to translate. Uh, uh, but the question is the same. When the CNC started to take the, the matter seriously, what was the, the trigger? Bonjour à tous. Euh, le CNC, en fait, a commencé à produire des données genrées à partir de 2014. Euh, et euh, à partir de 2018, nous avons mis en place un observatoire de la parité qui avait pour objectif, un observatoire permanent, pour qui avait pour objectif de produire des statistiques à la fois sur l'emploi, les salaires et les aides attribuées aux œuvres faites par des femmes. Oh, et... je, vais, je vais traduire maintenant. Okay. So, um, hello everybody. The CNC started to... Um... Um, make a database basically to count the figures uh, in uh, um, in, 20, in 2014 uh, and in 2018 an observatory was launched uh, to uh, make statistics basically. Uh, and about work uh, wages and uh, how the subsidies of the CNC 
were uh, used basically. Et ensuite, on a, je dirais, en parallèle de cette production de, de statistiques, on a, euh, sous l'impulsion notamment euh, du collectif 50-50, qui est une structure associative, on a travaillé à la mise en place d'un certain nombre de dispositifs, euh, dont euh, le bonus parité, qui euh, est né euh, en 2019, et depuis, on a une succession de mesures qui sont prises pour pouvoir accompagner la place des femmes dans la production cinématographique et audiovisuelle française. So, in, in parallel to this production of the data, we have started to implement some measures um, uh, alongside with professional uh, organizations and the collective 50-50, um, and among which uh, the, the bonus, uh, there is a special bonus for films that um, uh, hire uh, female uh, at key uh, positions uh, on sets or in the global production of the film. Um, and maybe, uh, Leslie, I will stay with you because um, there is something specific. Uh, I, I think that even though the census started in, in 2014, uh, to create data and to make statistics, th there was a big switch really after the Me Too uh, affair. And, and also because the, there was um, a strong demand from the French industry. Um, how, how did the... Um, um, so, so basically based on that, uh, the measures that you've taken, which are two big things, the, the bonus on, on the, um, for the production subsidy and um, And I know that you're working also on um, harassment uh, and uh, to work against violence on sets. Um, how have you worked alongside, basically, now I'm, I'm switching to the part when I would like you to explain the measures that you've undertaken to, to respond. Alors, so, la, la, la première mesure emblématique, c'est effectivement celle dont vous venez de parler, qui est euh, le bonus de 15% qu'on donne euh, au film, une bonification des aides au film qui présenterait euh, la parité sur les chefs de poste, sur les postes principaux euh, de l'équipe de tournage. Et donc, on sait que ça fonctionne assez bien. Alors, c'est une mesure qui a été euh, mise en place, en, en, qui a été votée en 2018 et qui a été mise en place en, en 2019, étendue de la fiction à l'animation et au genre documentaire. Et on n'a pas beaucoup d'antériorité, puisqu'il n'y a que deux ans sur cette mesure, mais euh, on voit que ça fonctionne assez bien, puisque 34% des films produits en 2020 ont bénéficié de cette mesure, de ce bonus parité à 15% de majoration, contre 22% l'année précédente. Donc je dirais que c'est un dispositif qui est euh, satisfaisant, mais qui a besoin de s'inscrire dans un moyen terme pas être uh, immédiat. Je passe, je passe à l'anglais. So, um, it, um, indeed, the, the, the first step that was uh, taken was the creation of this bonus, which basically is an increase of uh, 15% of the subsidy coming from the CNC on films that present uh, an equality in the, the share of key uh, roles on, on the film set uh, in, in the production. Um, and uh, it has been voted in 2018. Uh, it was uh, we have started to to adopt it the the, the measure in 2019, and on, we have only two years. Basically, 2020 is not finished, but we we know that in 2019, uh, 34% of the films uh, funded by the CNC uh, were uh, benefited from from this 15% bonus. And the figures of 2020 already shows us uh, an increase. Basically, we will have more films in 2020 that benefited from this bonus. So we, so it's very short term, so it's difficult. It, it's a measure that needs to be, um, uh, to see the results in a, in a longer period of time, but we have good hopes that it will help and, and increase uh, the, um, Uh, it, it will yeah, move forward and have, we will have more women at key um, uh, heads, heads of positions, sorry. Uh, and um, what, uh, Leslie, I'm, I'm, what I would like to comment on this bonus, what I think is uh, nice in, in this idea is that it does not only promote uh, female directors, but really female uh, technicians. 
because uh, of course the issue of parity is not only um, uh, concerning uh, the artistic positions but uh, all the the fields um how um how have you worked can you tell us a bit of of how you collaborated um with the professional organizations and how um, how did you establish basically this bonus what, what was the conversation how it's it's yeah very i'm interested in the hands on part of it how do you go Alors, j'ai j'ai pas entendu la dernière question mais je, je... le go between comment ça s'est passé euh, d'un point de vue pratique en fait comment vous avez collaboré parce que vous avez les professionnels donc comment a eu lieu la conversation alors euh... Il y, a eu une, il y a eu des assises euh, organisées par le collectif 50-50 au CNC. C'était les premières assises et euh, qui accueillaient quand même un nombre conséquent euh, de professionnels. Et au terme euh, de ces assises, effectivement, la mesure bonus 15% a été euh, euh, arbitrée. Et elle a fait l'objet d'une discussion, comme on le fait pour l'ensemble des dispositifs du CNC, elle a fait l'objet d'une concertation. Et il nous paraissait euh, extrêmement important de travailler sur tous les métiers, c'est-à-dire que les, les chefs de poste doivent être féminisés, ce n'est pas que le réalisateur. Et donc, ça peut être à l'image, au son, au montage. Enfin, L'idée voilà. était de dire on accompagne euh, sur des métiers, notamment techniques, où on a une majorité d'hommes. Et il est important pour nous que le changement soit de ce fait-là structurel. Et ça a été plutôt très bien reçu par les professionnels. Je pense qu'après, vous connaissez aussi bien que moi, ce sont des secteurs qui fonctionnent par réseau, par, par cooptation, par familiarité esthétique et technique. Et donc, il faut du temps pour que les choses évoluent. Mais on pense vraiment qu'une mesure de cette nature va y aider. Merci. Je traduis ça. Um, basically, what happened is that uh, after the Me Too and the creation of the, the collective. Uh, 50-50, there has been a big convention uh, in for France, uh, so uh, hosted by the Sensei, and that gathered all the professionals. And after the two days of conversation, several ideas uh, emerged, and the one of the bonus was uh, was the one that uh, was the most uh, that felt the most significant to us because it was. Um, as said before, uh, helping not only the emergence of uh, new uh, female directors, but um, pushing all the females in the industry. Um, and uh, and the, the, the feeling is that to bring structural change, you need to work on, on all the levels. Um, and uh, so there and there has been a, a, a conversation uh, with uh, the professionals to to think uh, of it in, in the most uh, efficient way uh, and the, the now basically we need time to the concrete results uh, um, thank you very much um, Leslie um, uh, I would like to jump to another initiative uh, from uh, two countries uh, which is very which felt very surprising for me when i read the study uh, luxembourg and ireland have uh, decided to work together on a development fund and it's the first time uh, that i um, see two countries collaborating on the matter uh, so how did it happen uh, i wasn't aware of the history of collaboration between ireland and luxembourg but may maybe there is something for a longer period of time tell us a bit and i don't know who would like to start and talk about it Guy, let's go. Okay, no, so first of all, Ireland and Luxembourg are small countries. We are collaborating already for a couple of years. We signed the co-production treaty between the two countries, I think, six or seven years ago. Since then, we're doing up to one, two, three feature films a year in co-production. So that's uh, for, for the relation between the two countries. Uh, why this co-production uh, development fund Uh, for a specific reason, as I, sa I, I said earlier on, it was extremely difficult to motivate the producers uh, to go out and come back and find um, feature films or projects with female directors. So I kept telling them for years, please try to, instead of coming uh, uh, with uh, male directors, why can you not uh, try and find specifically Uh, um, films with female directors. So as the, 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 my 
the answer to my question was uh, not really responded. I said, so we have to react from our side and we have to force them in a way or another to concentrate on the matter. And as I didn't want to introduce quotas or a kind of uh, repressive system, then I had the idea of saying, but so what about trying from the beginning on, from the right, writing stage on, to put uh, an, uh, an impetus on the um, on female writers and then afterwards develop the, uh, um, the movies uh, for female directors. So the idea came of, out of a pure necessity. And as we're always co-producing with another country, there's no film that in Luxembourg that can be financed in Luxembourg itself. So we always need a co-producer. So the there was no other way around this. If we wanted to create such a such a fund, we needed to have another partner on board. And as our relations with Ireland uh, are so good, so I said, why not uh, ask my colleagues from, from uh, Screen Ireland if they were uh, interested in doing this? And that, why Ireland was a, another reason as well, because I have to say this, I'm coming to the Galway Film Festival now for 20 years, I think. And what I discovered there was the creativity and uh, the quality of the script writing. So that's why I thought that I remember that I uh, have met during all these years quite a lot of uh, uh, writers, female writers that came up with interesting stories. So my idea was at the time, so why not try to combine these uh, positive aspects? And when I spoke to the CEO of the Irish uh, uh, Film uh, Fund at the time, he was uh, extremely interested. And we put that um, uh, idea into, into a few guidelines and we launched it last year. So, but I don't want to, 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 to talk alone on this uh, issue. I think Theresa and Ima are there as well. So they can uh, talk about uh, uh, their uh, uh, experience but for us it was uh, extremely interesting it was a good exercise we selected out of five uh, uh, candidates we selected three a few, uh, one of these projects i know is in a, a final uh, writing and development stage so we can expect getting at least one or two films out of this uh, of this initiative so but uh, Teresa, what do you think about yeah, uh, i think um i think uh, that you know exactly that we um we have had a long, uh, very, very successful partnership with the Luxembourg Film Fund um, around both live action and animation. Uh, and we have, um, yeah, we've had a lot of really, really good projects together. Um, and when uh, we, he suggested it, we thought it was a really good idea. And I think because of the relationship that's there, there's quite, there's quite a good working relationship between um, Irish producers and Luxembourg producers. They know each other. They've worked uh, across um, a lot of projects and it just seemed to make lots of sense to do it. And so we did it as a pilot scheme. Um, we both contributed um, funding. Um, we actually had a small reception in Cannes. We launched it um, and we got a good turnout of Irish uh, producers and, and Luxembourg producers. We uh, then took in applications. Um, uh, we took them in from the Irish producer and the Luxembourg Film Fund took them in from the Luxembourg producer. And then we both assessed everything and then we, um, it, um, individually, and then we came together um, with uh, Guy, Karim, uh, myself and Emer, and then we did uh, an assessment um, of all the projects together. Mike, Anna, Mike. Thank you, Guy. Uh, so, uh, Amar, have you, have you, how you been involved as a development executive? Have you con concretely how did it work out? Uh, there was a special call, I guess, launched, or how did it there work? Was, yeah, there was a special call, and we, we, you know. We kind of found it was the same thing sometimes with us Guy, where people say you know we just can't you know find the female directors or we don't know any or we don't you know so we did find this was a great way of 
um, focusing people um, and drawing attention and kind of incentivizing people um, to uh, work with uh, female directors. And, you know, it, it, it does form, I think, a wider, uh, you know, it's part of a mosaic approach that we take to the issue of, um, you know, gender diversity and, you know, it does form a, a part of a, a wider, wider initiative that we have, but it's a very important one, you know. Um, it's one that I'd see as um, certainly maybe being a first step, as Teresa said, it's a pilot, but, but even to look into other countries that are natural kind of partners for us to co-produce with, therefore why aren't we, you know, co-developing with them and then to open it up maybe out to other initiatives in terms of diversity overall. And, you know, I was saying to Teresa there earlier, it would be great like to see one based around female TV directors, you know, because we, we have, we have a small but great talent pool of TV directors and our female TV directors. We don't have enough and, and it would be a great way again, I think of incentivizing, I think producers to kind of think in terms of thinking in inside the box ways and in, in approaching it, you know, but, but we did find the quality of applications that came in that I helped assess with Teresa um, were very good. Um, you know, it was interesting. I think there was, there was one particular project, I think, and it, it's a good example of, of why it's great to have a, diversity in the room I think even when it comes to selecting projects because you know there was there was one a really fantastic one called Electric by Ali Hardiman and I remember I remember Guy you you couldn't really see it but the rest of the the female team could see it and it was just an example of how I think it's just one of those ones that wasn't for you you know whereas I think if there had been possibly a room full of men to de selecting projects they wouldn't have seen it and they would have gone oh no that's that's not for us so but, but Guy had some great points to make about it too. And, you know, so I, I think, you know, that was my experience. That's what, what it really brought home to me, how important it is, I think, to focus people's attention on this stuff and um, to, to just incentivize. And then in, in how the projects are selected that you, you really keep these things, I think, to the forefront of everyone's, of everyone's minds. Um, do you have a um, parity in general uh, in your selection committee is one of the measures that, that exists in Screen Ireland? In, do you mean in our selection criteria? Did you say? No, in the, in the selection committees. Uh, do um, you we, tr we try to, I mean, our staff is, um, you know, predominantly female trees, isn't it? But, but we do have... We're, <laughs> we're, very, we're very predominantly female. Yeah. <laughs> So um, I think, um, you know, one of the things I, I would say about, um, you know, launching into all of these initiatives and one thing that we found, and I'm sure um, other people will have found this, is that, you know, when you embark on these journeys, it is so, so, so important that what you're trying to do is um, bought into by everybody in the organization and it's part of the DNA of the organization. And we worked hard on that. And we have a staff who are so unbelievably committed into, you know, um, across everything we do in terms of promoting uh, equality and diversity. So actually it's kind of, it's, it's, it's good, yeah. Um, now I'm turning to you. Um, you really, uh, from what I read, um, you really have done many, many things in Spain. Like you have uh, a tax uh, rebate uh, special for uh, uh, led by female directors. You have a selection in the, um, you have parity in the selection committees. You also have uh, professional organizations that are um, involved in counseling uh, uh, on gender bias. Um, and uh, and you have a bonus system as well uh, and the funding but there is one thing that you're doing and that i haven't seen elsewhere which is a special label uh, that you give to films that promote gender equality can you can you tell us a bit more about it please? yeah sure um it was created in 2011 and uh, well it, it you know that it goes along along with the qualification for ages. So you, we have like uh, films that are for, especially for children or for under 12, etc. And then we can put this label together with the age uh, qualification. So we have uh, uh, in the last two years, I have the figures here. We've had in 2019, we have 
uh, 19 Spanish films that were that received this qualification, this certification, this label, and we have also 25 foreign films that were shown in Spain and were uh, that, and, and obtained this uh, label too. Um, some examples could be uh, Proxima, Proxima, which is a, a French film uh, um, by Alice Bino. Bino yep. <laughs> uh, for example, it obtained this label in 2019. Um, I mean, it, it is just one among others. You can check them if you want in the, cata in the catalog of the Spanish Film Institute. And this year we also have uh, uh, until the 10th of December, we had already 12 films uh, Spanish film qualified the, as uh, certified as, especially, uh, yes, sorry. How, um, I, how concretely, I mean, does it mean that there is a mention in the credits of the film or? or yes, yes we do have, yes, we, it is mentioned in the credit and it is recognized as, as it. So you have like, if you're, you can look for it if you want to. You can also like, it's a label that you, if you're looking for films that are especially promoting uh, gender equality, you can search for them because it's like uh, uh, something that it's um, together with the title. I don't know exactly how. And we are, we are also, I mean, it doesn't depend on the Spanish Film Institute, but we have um, uh, the, we have a, there is a platform that has been recently launched called Platino Educa, which is uh, um, consecrated to um, film education and it has like a lot of uh, films in uh, Spanish mostly from Spain and uh, Latin America and they have also a selection of uh, films on gender equality or which are so if teachers want to work these kind of values and want to show their uh, students uh, uh, good examples or nice stories, they can also search for them there. So it's like something we're trying to um, implement in by different means. Thank you very much. I'm turning back again to Anna from Sweden. Um, um, among all the measures that have been uh, quoted here, none of them is coercive, they're all incentives. Um, you uh, also have started incentives and, and because you have started somehow earlier uh, and you've threatened with quotas uh, and you haven't reached them. I mean, how is the, the balance? And so basically what, what happened in Sweden and um, what is the trigger? So you will, your position at the moment is, are you happy with with the measures and the results or or what could be and um, the return of experience basically so uh i am both happy and not happy uh, i think we should uh, i mean all progress needs to be um, celebrated for a while uh, and we are now in our uh so we started off this threatening and making a real clear action plan in 2012. So the first period was 2013 to 2016, and we reached 50-50, 49-51. So that's very close. Uh, this period, 17 to 20, we will reach uh, if nothing will happen with any of the decisions that we have taken we will reach uh, 44 percent which i still think is uh, very good it's not 50 but it's really uh, better than 40 60 which was my aim not to fall into the trap to say 40 60 is okay because then it's always 40 for women and 60 for men uh, i am not happy with the uh, share of money it's still uh, bigger budgets for men. Uh, it means that the audience will see more films made of men. And we know, because we've been counting as well, that that means that they will see a majority of films about men. Because we tend to do films about our own experiences. So I'm really not wanting to have women to have to do films about women. 
uh, but it shows that if you have a greater diversity behind the camera, it will show uh, in front of the camera, but it's uh, just not not every film will will reflect who is behind the camera. Uh, but the audience will, uh, I think the audience is entitled to see films that is relevant for them. And the audience is really diverse. And we have a very non-diverse uh, screening or uh, total for the audience, the bigger films. So I think that is a big thing. And the, th the second thing is that I'm not happy with the diversity within the women. The, um, the intersectionality issue has become very clear uh, during the years, I would say since 2015, when the hashtag Oscar So White was launched and that BAFTA and uh, I don't know, but Cesar, but BAFTA and Oscar, they are really, uh, they are scrutinized every year and they are really making a big job to get a, a greater diversity or inclusion. Uh, but it's very clear that the film industry is very white to be uh, blank. So I think that is uh, something we really need to address because we are a multicultural uh, film or audience in Europe and there is a huge potential that we are actually missing out from. And I think that uh, the, we need to work with that. So that is what the last thing we have done now. It is a um, report. We do annual reports about gender equality. And this report is especially targeting uh, women of color and women of age. It's called Witch Women because I realized that when I was talking about gender equality, I didn't re even understand that I was excluding so many women. So uh, this report is about women of color and it's in-depth interviews. And it's really like the stories we got from the Me Too movement, but it's about being, uh, it's about structural racism really that we are all contributing to whether we want it or not. And I think it's time to raise the awareness about that. And this report will be available in English uh, in mid of January. So uh, anyone who is interested can visit our website, sfi.se, I think it is, uh, or Film Instituted. I can write it in the chat. Um, and um, uh, or not, you just make sure, Anna, that someone you can send it out because you can get the link from us directly. Anyone who wants to read it in Swedish, it's already available. It was a very massive uh, uh, reception by the world of people of color, not only the women, uh, and it was very uh, important that we made a clear distinction between uh, racism more generally and racism against black people, because they are really the ones that suffers most. And we made a clear distinction and that was very well received. So I'm very happy about it. Uh, and now we will follow up with workshops with the industry and, uh, and actions. Thank you very much. Uh, so it's it's always the same method. It's it's uh, first we start to count to be able to acknowledge. It's the first step. Uh, second, once we have the figures, try to understand where the issues comes from and then uh, put incentives uh, in in place. Uh, we have actually a bunch of questions, uh, so I will start to to read them. Um, there is um, one question about um, European policies, because you're all working. I mean, of course, I'm very happy to see there is a collaboration uh, between two countries, but uh, we are all uh, talking from a more national level. Um, what are the things done on a European level and how? Wh which help could you receive um, 
what would be your expectations to port or your request towards European institutions towards the matter? Who would like to? Yeah, I can start because I'm chairing the EFAD's gender working group, which has changed name to gender and inclusion working group uh, with a clear uh, aim to, uh, to uh, <laughs> be uh, relevant for all women and not only some women. Uh, so we have a big exchange of uh, measures taken within the countries and it's posted on the EFAD's website. Uh, we are working towards the media program because they have received uh, more money and we uh, try we are trying to make them understand that the money should be uh, uh, made possible to uh, apply for to enhance the knowledge in different countries to do new things and we are all from very different levels in Europe so it's very important that not everyone is doing the same thing. Uh, and then Jurimaj uh, presented their actions uh, and they are uh, doing some more actions and they have presented that at the Jurimaj homepage as well. I just don't remember exactly what they are doing, but it's uh, clearly the co-production uh, world is looking for women. Thank you. Uh, I have a question uh, related to um, sexual harassment. Uh, according to you, which politics against harassment and sexual uh, harassment aggressions could work in the long term in order to encourage women to persevere in the industry and not to give up uh, after their first uh, shorts or first features? Uh, uh, I believe uh, I'm turning to Leslie from the French CNC because you have started a very strong action on the matter. Oui, euh, effectivement, nous étions dans une démarche euh, d'incitation avec le bonus, euh, comme on, comme on l'a évoqué tout à l'heure, et puis euh, nous avons décidé euh, pour l'année 2021, ce sera donc effectif au 1er janvier, euh, d'imposer à tous les demandeurs d'aide du CNC, donc euh, les producteurs, employeurs, euh, de répondre à un certain nombre d'obligations en matière de moyens pour euh, limiter le harcèlement sexuel euh, dans toutes les étapes de production de l'œuvre. Et pour accompagner ces professionnels, donc on a prévu d'en former 9000, nous avons mis à disposition une formation sur la prévention des situations de harcèlement sexuel dans les métiers du cinéma, de l'audiovisuel et du jeu vidéo. Um, thank you. Uh, so, indeed, we have started um, to, to work on, on measures to prevent uh, the situations of sexual harassment in the film industry, uh, which um, basically it will be compulsory starting of the 1st of January um, to um, fulfill a, a certain amount of um, uh, of um, measures basically and one of them is that all the employers uh, will have to have participated to um, a workshop uh, educational workshop about sexual harassment and you will not be able to apply to get funds from the CNC if you have not done this workshop uh, we plan to um, to have nine thousands uh, of, of producers and uh, um, basically uh, going through this, uh, this scheme, which, which is very, very uh, important. Um, I have a question uh, which is uh, maybe related to what we call the sort of glass ceiling, which is, um, is there any political action that could be um, done uh, before the female directors enter the professional world? Um, do we really address the problem at its source? Uh, who would like to talk about it? Elisa, maybe you? Yes, I can. I think it is an important question indeed. And I think um, we are trying to work also in mentoring, in trying to found mentoring programs in order to get these talented women to uh, come forward and present their projects. So we have, um, we are collaborating with an association of uh, women filmmakers, and together with Netflix also, I must say, and we are funding um, mentoring programs. So this 
script writers or new directors or who want to develop an idea can uh, can get access to this program and they're going to be um, mentored. They're, they're going to find producers to guide them through all the, the production system in order to create their um, works. And we're uh, I, I, I mean, hopefully in 2000 next year, we have our budget approved like in the next couple of days, <laughs> uh, we're gonna increase the support to this program and we would like to continue it in other ways, not only this mentoring program, but others. And we think it is really important to get all this talent uh, and put it in the industry. Thank you. Um, um, sorry, Anna, I would agree there um, with uh, Elisa. It's a key part mentoring for us as well. Of okay. some of our programs. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a new uh, emerging talent, diverse talent program called Spotlight and mentoring is a key part of that. Um, we have a scheme called POV, which is for female filmmakers. And again, mentoring form um, a key part of that. And then the training unit of our organization, Screen Skills Ireland, um, would continue to invest um, a huge amount in, in mentoring. So I would agree it's absolutely key to addressing that issue. Thank you. Th Theresa, uh, if, I don't know if you're talking to us, but... Well, sorry. I just wanted to jump in there on um, something we do, uh, which is a lot of European territories have tax incentives, uh, tax incentives for film production. And generally speaking, these tax incentives tend to be automatic. They tend to, you know, hit various kind of spend thresholds and... and the producer can access them. And that's the situation in Ireland. And one of the things that we did um, about uh, a year and a half ago is we um, revamped our system so that the uh, producers must apply for every project that is getting um, any form of the tax incentive. They must uh, apply with a skills development plan and that's really how they're going to develop the skills on live action um, and animation production uh, if they're obtaining the tax incentive. And part of that as well, which is, is really quite successful, is to bring on shadow directors um, to get a, a really good uh, you know, exposure um, to directing, to uh, being part of the production process. Um, and that's working very well. Well, um, thank you very much. Um, I have uh, two questions, if you can bear with us uh, a, a little bit, because um, somebody is asking about quotas um, and and uh, it's it's a question that keeps coming back, which which is a bit polemical. And uh, I'm, I'm curious maybe to to get quickly from each of you uh, the answer, why uh, didn't you go, to, did, didn't you, which, which would seem to be the most efficient because once you have quotas, then you have the equality. Who wants to start? Anna? Uh, sure, uh, I don't want to go that way because uh, then the discussion ends up being about quotas uh, and the uh, notion that quota money is woman's money and quality money is men's money. And uh, even though I believe that's really wrong, it really gets stuck in that conversation. And I didn't want that conversation. I wanted to talk about quality of films. Uh, so that's why I didn't want to go that way. But if the industry hadn't worked with me, I would have taken that disadvantage and gone the quote away anyway, but I'm happy that I didn't have to because uh, we have avoided that a little bit. There is still a very big discussion, of course, about uh, quality. Um, someone wants to, to, to add to this or Guy? Yeah, I fully agree with Anna. That's exactly what we didn't want to do neither, because especially as our system is solely a selective system. And if you then would have to decide to give money to a female director 
immediately the answers would have been yeah but it's not the project it's not as good as and she only got the money because she's a woman and so in order to avoid this situation so we try to um, uh, to not introduce quotas but to develop more positive measures and encourage producers to select uh, um, uh, movies by uh, uh, female directors or female writers. So I think you have to take, especially in a small country as we are in, where we only have a few, uh, we only have in Luxembourg roughly uh, 40 directors that did an, um, a feature film so far. And out of those 40, one third are, are female directors. So. I think we need positive measures rather than uh, 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 repressive ones. Well, uh, and I'm happy to end on, on the, the word positive. Uh, je veux bien, Anna, rajouter quelque chose pour la France. Euh, on est, je, je suis complètement d'accord avec tout ce qui vient d'être dit. Euh, le CNC en France aide des œuvres. Euh, des projets artistiques, des films, euh, qu'ils soient documentaires, d'animation, de fiction, de cours, de long. Et on est dans une logique de soutien à la qualité des projets euh, qui sont présentés. Et donc, c'est complexe, du coup, d'envisager, d'imaginer qu'on pourrait avoir euh, des mesures de quotas. On est plutôt dans des logiques euh, de politique publique qui accompagnent euh, les femmes euh, dans, leur, euh, dans, leur, euh, dans leur parcours professionnel, que ce soit... Euh, des écoles, de la formation initiale, de la formation continue, à l'aide au projet, à l'aide à la production. Enfin voilà, on est, on est dans quelque chose qui, qui est, comme je le disais tout à l'heure, à la fois incitatif et désormais un tout petit peu coercitif, puisque conditionnaliser les aides, c'est un pas qu'on n'avait pas franchi jusque-là. Mais on n'est pas dans une dynamique, on n'est pas dans une logique de quota. So, um, Leslie joins uh, both of you uh, in the regard that the idea is is uh, is not to to question quality so so by in, in introducing quotas it, it would be uh, it, it's exactly what uh, anna said uh, basically uh, and that the policy of the sensei was always has always been more to accompany uh, the women in the overall development of their career uh, by other means um, and that the um, well, uh, they have gone a bit coercitive by this. Um, when you f when you force um, people to attend the workshop to get the, a subsidy, then you are coercitive. But it's not. Uh, you you can be coercitive without having quotas, basically. So that's the the idea. Um, merci. Uh, thank you uh, to all of you. Um, I hope that um, the different incentives that were mentioned today uh, will inspire uh, other film funds and other countries who have not started uh, yet um, to tackle the matter. And um, yeah, thank you very much for your time and um, have a great, uh, keep uh, the, the good work and uh, looking forward for the figures of next year, basically, to see that they keep uh, growing or we are closer to equality. Have Thank, a you. Thank you. Au revoir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.